Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone, to all the viewers. I'm back. We back. I'm joined by the brother Faraz Abid for another uh, How I Learned Arabic uh, story. And you guys know how it goes. I uh, bring you guys uh, brothers and sisters who have learned Arabic, who went from the, from the state of not knowing Arabic to the point of knowing Arabic. And we asked them how it was and how it was throughout learning Arabic and how it is now that they know Arabic. So, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, first of all, Brother Faraz, how are you? Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. So, uh, you jo you're calling us from the UK today, right? Yeah, from the United, yeah, United Kingdom. Okay, mashallah. So, uh, I will let you, I will give you a couple of minutes to first uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and in a general way, because I will get into the questions later, but in a general okay. way, where do you, where do you learn Arabic and just, you know, in general, a little bit by yourself? Uh, uh, so I'm from Peterborough, United Kingdom. I learned uh, my Arabic and Islamic studies, etc., in the United Kingdom. Uh, I've been to a few Arab places, uh, mainly for holidays. Uh, but um, Egypt, I went for a bit, and um, I've done a bit of hifs, uh, and I'm married. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, that's that's a good uh, disclaimer because uh, you know the sisters okay. who will see you, they will be like, they will, oh, is the, is the brother married? I want to, I want to get married. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so okay, so you you before you because you told me you went to Egypt, you you mainly learned Arabic in in the UK. But before yeah. you you went to other countries, did you actually yeah. already learn the Arabic and was you able to uh, yeah, speak uh, etc.? No, I mean I wasn't able to speak first. Um, I only started learning Arabic because my dad used to go to classes. Okay. Uh, when I was about fourteen, fifteen, I used to just join him in the classes and listen in, mm -hmm. and then I started I started getting interested in the language and that's when I started off pick, picking it up. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm always, I'm always amazed uh, when I, when I see brothers who started. Uh, I mean, it's maybe because when I started learning Arabic myself, I was really motivated and I was, you know, I was determined to learn the Arabic language. But in Spain, and I always tell this to the brothers, we don't have much, you know, things going on for young Muslims, mainly young people who start practicing, etc. And so I yeah. didn't find nowhere to to learn Arabic, and the places they were too expensive. So, you know, uh, alhamdulillah that we have you here to share uh, your story today with us. So, so what, what was your, your age when you, when you first got into a class, Arabic class? I started in the local masjid around 13, 14. Okay. Uh, um, I just used to go, because my dad used to go weekly, once a week. And um, because he was interested for his own reasons. And then he just brought me along. <laughs> right. I wasn't interested at first, but uh, slowly, slowly, I started uh, seeing the importance of uh, Arabic and uh, the Luga, etc. Right. So, so th <laughs> those studies were like general Islamic or it was just literally Luga? Uh, um, as in when I used to go when I was young. Yeah. yeah when you first started. Were, no. uh, uh, my first time, my dad was learning from these... The Medina books, those the okay. three level Arabic books, he was learning mm -hmm. from them, and I would just sit in and listen and see what they were doing, and so yeah. Okay. Right, right now you you know you know that you're about to start learning Arabic, and you know that mm -hmm. you know you found a class and a place to to learn. What was yeah. you afraid of, uh, you know, starting out? Um, I wasn't. Af I mean, I wasn't afraid of. Of any, uh, as in, because I was young yet, yeah? mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to do my A levels and go uni, do a normal thing. But what happened was, uh, with my uni degree, I wanted to do Arabic. I wanted to do language with it, because mm -hmm. some courses have Arabic with the subject. And, um, and it was. I saw how hard it was, because uh, mm -hmm. I used to, I used to go with my dad, and sometimes I wouldn't go. Because I wouldn't know, I wouldn't no. know it. And, 
um, that that's really what I was afraid of because how no. hard it was. Laziness as well. Oh, no. I, um, I think I'm still lazy now. <laughs> <laughs> so in the beginning, you said you wouldn't, you wasn't really interested, but it was more your father started to push you a little bit. Then yeah, yeah, you yeah, started to get it, interested. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit like that for me as well. But I mean, it was a when I was younger, my father used to to push me to. And Alhamdulillah, all the madaris in, in Spain, all the places where yeah. like to learn are either Pakistanis or, or Bengalis. Yeah, and yeah. my father, he would push me to go on, on <laughs> Saturday. But, uh, but I was young, I didn't like it, you know. And then I stopped going like when I was 10 maybe. And mm. then when I was 16, I started to get interested again. So, you know, mm. thanks to our, our parents for trying out. Yeah. For trying out this. Uh, okay, so... Um, you know, once you started to to actually get interested in, uh, in uh, mm. you know, you started to get motivated to actually learn more and more about the Arabic language. What was the mm. the thing you desired the most from learning Arabic? To to understand it, to read it, to write, to speak, uh, all because I used to go. I've been Umrah a few times, and mm-hmm. what happened uh, Umrah is in Taraweeh, Salat to Taraweeh, when the Imam starts crying and the Jama starts crying and start crying as well. You're thinking, what's going on here? What happened? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm just looking at my dad thinking, well, what's what's happening here? Mm-hmm. And I think that's when my dad felt that it was important to learn Arabic as well. So mm-hmm. um, Allah just reveals ways for you to no. do things. So. Yeah, that was my turning point as well. I remember yeah. there was a speaker in, in France that I used to listen to. And uh, this was in my beginnings of starting to practice. And he said, he said, he had a question on, on, it was, the question was basically a complaint about the Tarawih, that it was too long. And so he said, well, maybe it's not the Tarawih that is long, but maybe it's you that you don't understand. It just becomes, you know, boring, basically. So maybe what you need to do is, is go ahead and, and learn Arabic. And I, this, this answer always stuck in my head. And since then I was like, okay, I need to. Need to learn Arabic because that that happened to me. You know, I used to go to Taraweeh and it's literally like, exactly. Okay, yeah. How many we have now? Okay, we got six. We got we got seven. Okay, okay. This is the seventh <laughs> one. Okay, you you just counting the rakas. Exactly the same. <laughs> no. So uh, so the, what? No. You can see the difference as well when yeah. you never used to understand it, and now how time flies in Salat to Taraweeh. How we no. just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. You know, it's the first time actually when I when I came here to Mauritania, I have never experienced praying twenty six rakas because some of the some of the you know in the in the Maliki fiqh, for example, yeah, uh, yeah. there is the opinion that, that they say it's thirty six rakas. So okay. here in in front of my my house, they do twenty twenty six mm-hmm. rakas, and I have never experienced that. Wow! Uh, but you know, they kind of like. It's still a Jews, I think, but it's split in 26 okay. rakats. Mm-hmm. And subhanAllah, it's, it's three hours, but it goes quite fast because you, you know, you're listening to every day to the, mm-hmm. to the, to whatever the, the imam is reading, basically, you're just following. So it's, it's really nice. It makes a, a difference. So, okay. So once you start <laughs> learning, right, and going to class, uh, what was the, the method you guys used or the book? Um... Oh, uh, so uh, act- so the method we used was basically the ustaz would explain the lesson. So mm-hmm. I was using uh, various books, uh, Nahu Self, mm-hmm. um, Ajrumiya. That was in my first year. Ajrumiya, uh, Shalhum Yati Amil, mm-hmm. um, some speaking Arabic speaking books. Um, but the way the ustaz would explain the lesson. <clears throat> And then what we would have to do is we would go go back, and the next day we would have to translate that page. So say, if it's uh, four lines um, or a page of Arabic text, he would explain that text, and then um, we would have to go go away, mm-hmm. and um, the next day we would come back with the translation, and okay. uh, our best way of explaining it. Mm-hmm. Was uh, that? So, and, yeah. Was that from Arabia bin Adik by any chance? No, nah, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, this the madrasa I went to. The principal he he had his own texts. It was mm-hmm. called uh, 
امداد النحو في امداد الصرف اوكي اند اند ذن يا اند وي يوزد مقدمه جروميه اند ذا كلاسيكال تكست بت هي هاد ذا اون صرف النحو ذا برنسيبال هاد ذا اون صرف النحو سو يو جايز وينت ستريت اواي انتو انتو النحو يو نو وي وينت ستريت اواي انتو صرف بت وي ديد ذا بيت اوف مدينه بوكس فور ا كوبل اوف مانث فيرست جست تو جيت يوزد تو ذا um the the terms of zaliga tilka man and anti and uh just to get into that and then we straight we went straight into nahaf because it was a uh, it was boarding i was boarding for um three four years there okay so i was basically it was nine to five but it was learning nine to five and then in the evenings we would uh do the homework do the texts and everything mm-hmm. and then the next day we'd have that ready So, so what up was... I'm I'm very curious about what what about the vocabulary Vocabulary yeah so uh, after every lesson there was around 10 20 words okay. which we would have to pick up um so as well as translating or explaining uh, translating that page or the paragraph we would have to learn the words as well Okay um so if there was a te- if there was a page on uh dhalika tilka tanika and ulaika then we would have to learn some words so mm-hmm. to so um uh, so ulaika um, muflihun muflihun and the sentences with it so okay, pick so up some vocab there. so it was like learning the arabic language to understand the quran kind of thing yeah 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 it was uh, it was fusha yeah yeah all fusha mm-hmm. okay so um so do you ever came across uh, you know the meth like do you guys do the tasrifat as well like for example ذهب yeah, ذهب yeah. اذهب ذهب yeah, ذهب 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 Uh, I think the best way to learn it is this way, you know? Yeah, using the grids, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, it worked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was... definitely. <laughs> so, so, for how long did you study strictly just uh, Arabic? Uh, um, strictly Arabic was about two years, and then we went into Asul uh, Hadith, sort of Fiqh, Tafsir, mm-hmm. and the Arabic text itself. So we went to Arabic texts after two years of studying okay. the grammar. Okay. <coughs> so, so, uh, so, how many aha moments do you have through throughout the process? Uh, I had quite a lot. You know, after every lesson, when you understand the lesson and you can clock that, those sentences, yeah. Or the first moments, you know, when you go to Salat al-Taraweeh. And you understand, yeah, man, this is a jama, or this is a plural, or yeah. uh, this is a fail, or yeah, yeah, I know what's happening here, and um, you you understand what's going on. That's yeah. the that's all the moments I had. I started having them after learning. So when I came, used to come back home on the weekends, uh, and especially in Ramadan, I used to be like, yeah, you know, I, I know, I know what he was talking about, or the khutbah even, the juma, salat al juma. Yeah, I know what the Imam was talking about, and I'll, it'll be like that. Everything start, it starts to click. Everything starts to click. Everything starts yeah. to come together. Um, especially after, because um, there's a mission as well. Darulum Arabic studies is a mission. It's a. Uh, I've realized that as well because only 10 of us graduated. There were 30 of us that started, mm-hmm. <laughs> and 20 well. slowly, slowly. Like some went for personal reasons. Some went because it was too hard. Some went because they couldn't board and they could, they mm-hmm. had to go home. They felt homesick. So mm-hmm. it was, and some went because they failed the exam. So that's yeah. Only ten of us ended mm-hmm. up graduating. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that Darul Ulum. I mean, it's quite. I think it's quite uh, quite known in 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 the UK. So, mm. so is it a, like a four year program or something? Yeah, it's a uh, it's four years, uh, and then you have to. Well, you don't have to, but you go abroad or you go somewhere else to okay. further your study. Um, because obviously, the one disadvantage is, I think anyway, is speaking. Mm-hmm. Darul Looms in UK, we don't speak Arabic. It's more grammar mm-hmm. and more texts and stuff. 
uh, but speaking wise, that's why they told us to go to Egypt, to go to Jordan, Amman, mm -hmm. and all these other places. So. Okay, and that's the question <laughs> that I was I was gonna ask you right oh, now, like okay. for you to yeah. to tell us without being humble, what would you rate your Arabic conversational skills from one to ten? Uh, um, this conversational is about five to six. It's not. Um, um, what happened was after Egypt, I come back. I'm speaking English all over again, and it's like I've forgotten how to yeah. uh, speak <laughs> Arabic. Nah. Um, yeah, but uh, I mean, as soon as I go to Arab country, it'll take me one, two weeks, and I'm back into the flow again. It's just, yeah, I don't yeah. know why. I think it's just that natural, it's natural yeah. habits. Sort of thing. It's just. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, if you look <laughs> at, I remember, I remember watching a documentary on on how how the the body of the human being works basically and they used to so it was it, they were testing the capacity of uh, of the human being basically and they were they will give to uh, to a person <coughs> a glasses that has mirrors that are actually crossed so basically when you use your right hand you you actually yeah. see yourself using the left hand and so when you want to turn right, you actually need to turn left, right? So the first, the first two weeks, I think it was, it was exactly two weeks. Like, yeah. you know, the person was bumping him, himself against the wall and, <laughs> and you know, try, like making, making a mess. Everyone trying to pick up the, the glass of water. But after two weeks, uh, he was using, like, you know, it was, it was by rote. It was mechanical. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So yeah. it happens as well with my with my languages. For example, right now I'm speaking in English, and mm. and Subhanallah, my 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 mother tongue and my mm. native tongue is Spanish. However, I feel more comfortable speaking English than Spanish right now, because yeah, uh, you know I mean, for example, I've been married for to my to my wife. She's a, she's native uh, English speaking for s almost seven years. So right now it's like, you know, it became like I speak it every day, basically. But Spanish, mm. if I'm not in Spain or if I don't call my mom or if I don't call my father, I don't speak it like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's the same with, with Arabic, you know, when you when you stop practicing, then you just lose it. Yeah, it's yeah. been, I think, four or five years for me now. I haven't. Subhanallah. Uh, but I've been trying to keep on top of it because I'm teaching here and there part time in the evenings mm -hmm. and uh, on the weekends I teach in masjid. So um, it keeps my Quran going, but not the texts, not the no. conversation, nothing else. So, طيب إذا إذا سألتك الآن بالعربية هل كنت تفضل الدروس الجماعية في جماعة في فصل واحد أو خاصة مع الأستاذ فقط؟ uh, I got the I got the first bit. Then you went a bit too fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I basically said that. Do you enjoy private classes or or group classes better? Oh, private classes or group classes? Okay. Uh, uh, it depends. You know, on the stars. Mm -hmm. um, uh, group classes are okay, but private classes you gain more because no. you can ask how much you want. You get your time is with the teacher himself or herself because um, you're alone. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Group classes are good if you already have learned the topic mm -hmm. and you go. We used to do every evening, we used to sit in a group, there's three, four of us, and uh, we used to like revise over the day what we had gone through. Mm -hmm. and there was four of us. So if, if I never knew something, another person, an another student would have told me, yeah, yeah, that's how you translate this word or this is a better translation and no. explain the whole thing. No. So it, I think it just depends. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> so when you when you went to Egypt, where, where were you in Egypt? Where, where exactly did you go? Uh, I went Cairo. I was going to go to Al-Azhar. <laughs> I was oh, going yeah. to go to Al-Azhar. Uh, but um, I only stayed for a few months and then... I had uh, physical problems. Mm -hmm. I had to come back because my, my hip I had hip problems. Okay. Uh, and so I ended up in Cambridge for a year, doing studies there for a year. Mm -hmm. So do you so, get, do you get the do you have the opportunity to get into any center in Egypt? I have the opportunity. Yeah, I have the opportunity to 
jump into Al Azhar, um, mm-hmm. and I think there's a place in Yemen as well. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, what, what you're saying, yeah, I have the opportunity to jump into their course no. and do do the um, do the full thing now. But uh, it's been a few years, <laughs> and I ended up getting married in those few years. No, <laughs> had to yeah, get marriage a job. It, it can definitely push you yeah. back sometimes. No. And uh, that's it now. I've, I feel like I'm, I don't know, but honestly, it's just like, it feels like it's far away, the studies. I no. feel like I don't know. It feels like I've done them 20 years ago. It just, that's how it feels. No, no, no. Subhanallah. <laughs> so what would you, what would you say you are, you are able to, like with the Arabic you have right now, what does it help yeah. you to do, for example? Uh, I can pick up any texts mm-hmm. and... I can understand and read them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm able to understand um, some of the stuff in in the khutbas and uh, the Quran, etc. Mm-hmm. What else? Um, basically, when I look at a word or I look at a sentence, etc., I can pick up more than the average person, someone mm-hmm. who hasn't studied. So I can pick up, I see the more of the secrets that it opens and message it opens to us. No, um, definitely. And, and is also able to teach as no. well. So it gives you, um, it gives you a lot of stuff. It gives you respect as well. I don't know no. if you notice, but like when you come out from learning this stuff, people automatically respect you when you go to the masjid and masajid, no. and um, and Allah gives you all of that. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. I mean, He says it in the Quran, Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah. He says. يَرْفَعُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah يَرْفَعُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ So, uh, okay, so what do you think it was the hardest part of learning English? Hardest uh, part? Arabic? Right. <laughs> the hardest part was um, keeping on the course. There's, mm. There was bumps here and there saying, you know what, this is too hard or something's always pushing you back no. um, especially when you have to remember everything in Arabic mm-hmm. you can't forget something it's like it's mad yeah. <laughs> you're not allowed to forget anything you have to remember all of it and uh, that's what mm, I think that's that's the hardest thing and also laziness procrastination mm-hmm. oh man I that was <laughs> deadly uh, I've had that all my life I think through all my studies and uh, I had to discipline myself, especially mm-hmm. when I went to Darul Uluma. I had to have a lot of discipline. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the hardest thing, I think, discipline and being able to do, keep at it, keep at it, practicing, practicing, practicing. Mm-hmm. Is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this discipline is because, as as you might know, I have a, an online program. It's it's, yeah, uh, yeah. it's called Arabic like an Arab, and our main three things. Like we, you know, our slogan kind of thing is teaching people how to learn Arabic in one year with simplicity, discipline, and uh, uh, focus, you know. So discipline, I mean, if discipline is, I, I once read a quote, it says, it says discipline is the only requirement to master uh, another, uh, you know, another, another thing or another field, basically. It's the only requirement. Yeah, discipline is something that you need to have. Otherwise, you're gonna find it too hard. Yeah. Um, but that's with anything. That's with anything. No. Okay. So, what what would you say is um, like how of an how of an impact how of an impact it, it, it mm. has had to you in your life? Uh, you know, learning Arabic. Uh, it's made a huge impact. Um, I've become more. If you saw me ten years ago, saw me now, whole difference. <laughs> My yeah. other change, discipline has changed. I've become more um, like calmer, more peaceful, calmer, no. passionate, more because all these texts it teaches you, it puts you in your place. No, it makes, it makes you a better Muslim, and uh, and now. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> now I say how of an impact it has had yeah. in your life and how uh, things are different now. 
yeah, now things are very different. Um, like, like I said, I've ch- changed as a person. Um, Salah has changed me, like going to the masjid here and there, teaching, especially teaching, uh, coming across different students, um, and Arabic in general as well. Like when I go to Turkey, Morocco, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, all these different, uh, Dubai, you see the different cultures. Mm-hmm. And you can understand different things, but um, it's had a huge impact. It's changed my whole life, really. No, um, it's made but, me a better person. Alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. So going back, I just I was actually looking for the quote. Going back to the to the quote, right. it's, it's actually <laughs> self discipline is the only skill required to master any other skill. That's what I meant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to end uh, this this um, this interview, I would like to ask you to give an advice uh, to the average person that knows and acknowledges yeah. the importance of learning the Arabic language, however, for whatever reason, they haven't started yet? Um, I would say, um, I get a lot of people asking me this as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would say that they should find time, if they're working or if they're busy, find time, at least one hour a week or two hours, find a private teacher, even if it's online, uh, Skype, etc and um, do your Arabic like mm-hmm. that. But you need to find a teacher. It's hard to, um, it's hard to some, start something new with a book. Mm-hmm. If you get, uh, like if I've- It's hard to I've teach started, yourself basically. Yeah, yeah. So if, I've, if I start and you hold it, you say I never knew nothing about Tajweed, never knew anything. And I started myself, I would never get anywhere. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I studied it f- with a teacher for a year, and then went on my own way, then I would know how to do it and what, what to do here and there. So at least start with a teacher mm-hmm. and that way you can build yourself up afterwards if they want to carry on like that. But that would be my advice. No. Just to find someone uh, in the local city and just get on top of it. Get on to it. It's important what you say, find time, because a lot of people for many yeah. things in life, they say, they say, oh, I just don't have time. It's not that you don't have time, you just don't make time. Because if you really, truly are sincere with you, look at what you do when you have, when you're not doing what you, you know, what, you, what is taking off your time. Most of the times yeah. it's just like, you know, laying down on the couch or relaxing, <laughs> Instagram scrolling, things like yeah. that, you know. So making time and it's good as well to busy yourself with something that benefits yeah. you, uh, you know, in life. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, Faraz, for making time uh, for us to share, uh, you know, your story. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I would like to end this interview by plugging myself and saying that if you watching this and you are interested about learning the Arabic language, I would uh, highly recommend you to go down below this video. You will see a link that will bring you to my study case. In my study case, I explain you how I went from zero to fluent in Arabic in 10 months with one single book and one single one single hour per day so you guys can check that out there and uh in terms of uh, of uh, of akhana faraz thank you very much again and uh i hope that your ramadan is going is going well as well i hope yours is too <laughs> no. all right so for all the viewers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh